today, right here, right now, you and me, we're going to talk about full fat versus non-fat dairy products. This one, it's a doozy. Okay, so before I get started, I just want to say when it comes to nutrition, I generally speak to people without any underlying conditions. I speak to uh, general healthy humans. And I say that because I don't know you and my specific advice may not be applicable to you. I just want you to know that before you're like, oh, well, Emily said, but you, you know, if your doctor says something different, do what your doctor says. Even still, this is very, very controversial in the nutrition world. And you will probably find 1800 different articles that disagree with me, but I am telling you my thoughts because what is Instagram if not a void to scream your opinions and thoughts into? Let's do this. First thing you need to know about fat is what is cholesterol? There's two different kinds of cholesterol. Let's take it back to ninth grade biology. So you have your LDLs and your HDLs. LDLs are low density lipoproteins are considered the bad cholesterol. It is the cholesterol that can stiffen arteries, it can clog arteries, it can inflame arteries. It is what is directly related to heart disease or at least increases your risk for heart disease. HDLs or high density lipoproteins can actually clear out LDLs. So it removes inflammation from your arteries, it helps unclog them, it is generally healthier and you want to eat foods generally that are higher in HDLs than LDLs. So next, now that we have that, let's talk about the types of fat. The first one we're going to talk about, and bef uh, hmm. I did write an article about macros way back in the day on my blog, so I'm skimming this so that we can get down to the nitty gritty of full fat versus non-fat dairy products specifically. So if you have other questions, you can always check out my blog, the link's in the bio um, before we get started. Let's talk about trans fats. A little bit of food history for my food history nerds. In the early 1900s, we did not have the technology to store food in fridges. Fridges did not become personally owned by households until like the 20s, 30s, 40s. So food manufacturers had to find a way to elongate the shelf life of their foods. That's where hydrogenated oils come in. Some German scientists in the early 1900s came up with hydrogenating oil, or um, which created trans fats basically. So, Trans fats are very bad for you. They actively work against your health. They have really high LDL, the bad cholesterol, and they have really low HDL, the good cholesterol. So it's nothing but bad for you. If you're wondering what has trans fat in it, think Twinkies, margarine, that kind of stuff. Um, trans fats are now not legal to use in the United States. However, keep an eye out for what is considered hydro partially hydrogenated. So if something on your food label says partially hydrogenated on it, it means that there's still some trans fat in there. It's 0.5 grams or less, but it's still in there. It's sneaky. They don't have to claim it as, hydro or as trans fat if there's that small of amount, but it is still an added amount. You will find trans fat in animal fat as well. <laughs> but it's such a low amount that that's not really the issue. The, the problem with trans fats is the added trans fat that is put into processed food. The next one we're gonna talk about, monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats. And these have really high levels of HDL and low levels of LDL. So they are like the opposite of trans fats. They work toward really good heart health and you are encouraged to eat them. Where can you find monounsaturated fats? Good question. Olive oil, peanut oil, avocados, almonds, that kind of thing. Where can you find polyunsaturated fats? Walnuts, flaxseed, fish, and oils with 
made or oils made from sunflowers, soy, soybeans, corn. What we are going to talk about today at length are saturated fats. So saturated fats are commonly found in animal products. I night the rise a sirloin of beef. But it's found in plants too. It's found in coconut oil and palm oil. Yeah. That's a thing. Okay. If you're unsure what is saturated and what is unsaturated fat, think about it this way. Saturated fats are typically solid at room temperature. So coconut oil for sure. Um, butter, you know how bacon will, will get solid after it cools down. So the only exception to that rule is, is milk, obviously. And uh, I'll explain why in a second. So in the past, uh, saturated fat has been linked strongly to heart disease. And that's where the whole low fat, non-fat craze has come in. And it's been a thing for years. But let's talk about dairy products. So if you've been researching at all about what's healthier, non-fat or full fat, or you've heard of things like the keto diet or even um, paleo or anything like that, a lot of people will say that one of the reasons why full fat milk is healthier than non-fat milk is because it's less processed. But is that really true? Milk goes through several stages, regardless of uh, what kind of milk it ends up being. It goes through several stages of being processed. So the first stage is that the cow is milked. You have cow milk. The second stage is it's skimmed immediately. It's already separated. Regardless of what it is, it's already separated. Then fat is added back into the skim to create whatever percentage milk fat you're gonna have. So skim 1%, 2%, that cream is added back into the skim to create whatever percent milk you're trying to create. The milk is then homogenized so that the fat molecules are equally distributed throughout the milk product. So it stops the fat from rising to the top because fat is light, which is why uh, milk is different than other um, full fat products. After the milk is homogenized, it is then pasteurized. This is just a heat treatment to help kill any bacteria that could come up while the milk is setting. So it just helps the shelf life of the product. So in general, no, skim milk is not more processed than whole milk. It's about the same. The only chemicals that actually go into milk are vitamins A and D if they're fortified with those vitamins. Okay. So like I said before, saturated fat has been linked to heart disease, but that's not necessarily true either. There's been a lot of studies that have come out lately that disprove this, and I'm not going to go into the, the science behind it. You can research that on your own, but people are kind of pushing back against the whole full fat, non-fat thing. Um, so, and there are studies that disprove that it, it directly relates to heart disease. So here's the caveat to that. It's not necessarily true, maybe, that saturated fat directly relates to heart disease. However, it is 100% true that poly and mono unsaturated fats prevent heart disease. So if you have to choose between saturated and unsaturated fat, you should go with the unsaturated fat. It has also been said that of late, they've proven that full fat mouth milk actually contains more nutrients such as HDLs, which can offset the LDLs found in full fat milk. So there's a lot more research to be done there. Okay, all that being said, I'm still gonna fight for having full fat dairy products. Hear me out. Fat is what gives a dairy product its flavor. That's what makes it seem so rich. Foods that no longer have fat in them. Food manufacturers still have to, have to make up for that flavor somehow. What do you think they put in replace of that fat? A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. The medicine go down. Medicine go down. Sugar. And sugar is directly related 
to heart disease, to diabetes, to obesity. Cheeky. Why? Because when sugar is broken down in the body, it is released as a triglyceride, which is a lipid, a fat, in the blood. Not good. Yes, there are foods that have natural sugars. Any fruit, it's literally fructose, that's a sugar. It's the added sugars that we're really trying to work against. So non-fat yogurt, look at how much sugar is in that. Sometimes non-fat yogurt can have more sugar in it than a Twinkie. Holy crap, more sugar than a Twinkie. That's too much. And even if you use sugar alternatives like agave or honey, I like to put honey in my tea, it's still sugar. Just because it's a healthier, not as processed version, your body is still gonna break that same thing down as sugar. So it's still gonna end up being a triglyceride in your blood. So really, the whole question of non-fat versus full fat isn't the right question at all. The question is, if I'm not going to eat full fat, what should I replace it with? And the answer is not non-fat food. The answer is different fats. If you're not going to eat full fat yogurt, then have an avocado. It's much healthier for you than non-fat yogurt. If you are replacing your full fat foods with carbs, sugar, bread, that kind of stuff, then you're actually making it worse. If you still really want yogurt, what you really should be looking for is higher protein and low sugar rather than focusing on the fat. So if you decide, you know what, I'm gonna go for the full fat option, be aware, fat is very, very, very energy dense. There's like nine calories per gram of fat, I think. Yeah, I'm right. Nine calories per gram of fat. That's super, super, super energy dense. So yeah, don't eat a lot of it. Pick and choose where you put your full fat food in and don't replace it with non-fat ingredients. Replace it with just a different food entirely. If you don't, if you wanna eat yogurt every day for breakfast, eat full fat yogurt every day for breakfast, a smaller one. Instead of using dairy products, you can always replace them with other products like plant-based products like oat milk or nut milk. It's up to you. You just have to be aware of how much you're eating and what you're eating. So which is better, non-fat versus full fat? I argue that full fat is healthier for you in smaller doses than non-fat anything. That's my recommendation. Just be aware of how much you're eating. I hope this helps. Eat well, have a good day. Bye. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. The medicine go down. Medicine go down. Ah!